Hey guys, Phil here with what I hope is a relatively quick video, though probably knowing me I'll talk a lot and won't be so quick, but this is about a real world example where I wanted to move a Rails app from MySQL to Postgres. And so I'm going to walk you through the steps I used to get that data out of MySQL and into Postgres and the little things I needed, needed to do to get the Rails app running. So let's quickly switch over and take a look. So the first thing we want to do, of course, is change the uh, MySQL. We don't want to use the MySQL gem anymore. We want to change that to uh, Postgres. And I believe the easiest thing is to do this. Um, seems to be some issues with those gems. So we're going to leave it at that. And the other thing I'm going to do, which I think I've already done. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we want to have .env installed um, because we're going to use an env file to run some of our Docker stuff. Yes, I'm going to use Docker as well. So it's quite a thing going from MySQL to Docker and Postgres. Well, and Postgres using Docker. So we're going to use uh, .env rails and I think that's about all I need in there. Um, let's give it a shot. So let's go over and go up to uh, the app and we're going to do a bundle. And that'll probably just go out and get all our stuff and we're good to go. And I'm sure in there somewhere is Postgres. So as I said, we were using a .n file. So let's take a look at the n file that I'm going to use. This is simply for uh, the Docker migration. The Docker migration stuff is down here. And uh, so this is the MySQL settings. And this is the uh, Postgres settings. Well, that's not. Postgres settings, so I guess I could put Postgres and MySQL here. Whoop. Come on. And uh, don't worry, yes, I'm showing you my passwords. I don't use these passwords in production. And I'm going to set my time zone to be Asia, no other reason other than to show you that you can set a time zone. And that's that. And then the other thing, of course, we need to do, we have, this is our database YAML. It's a bog standard, uh, you know, a kind of out of the box MySQL database YAML that you get. Um, we're not going to use that. What we're going to use is this fancy one. So I'm even going to, no, I won't delete it, but um, here's the database Postgres and we're going to use these environment variables that we're setting in the .in file. That's why we need to have .in Rails installed. So we set these um, things, set the database name and in production, of course, we use a database URL. We don't use these silly things here. So we've got all of that set up and now I'm going to switch over just to make this quicker. I'm just going to switch over to um, an actual uh, app that I've got. Um, yes, 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 yes. Moving, and we're going to switch over to uh, Git checkout Postgres. And let's go back here and we can see that we've got our database YAML, it's all set up, our end file, everything is good to go. So what we first need to do is have a database that we connect to. That's actually not the first thing we do, is it? We need to get our databases running. So let's use Docker Compose. Um, this, as you've, if you've been watching my recent videos, you know that I've kind of fallen in love with how to do this. It makes life so much easier for um, uh, 
whatever requirements and so on and so forth. So I've created a Docker compose file that has both my SQL and Postgres in it. So we're setting up the um, Postgres. We're just going to use the Postgres image straight from the server. We don't do anything fancy. We set our password. Of course, I could set that from the end file. I don't know why I didn't do that, but you know what I mean. Set all that in, got that. We've got a volume to store our data. And we. this is the MySQL. We're going to, again, use the MySQL image direct from the server, uh, MySQL 8. Here's the time zone. You know, you can pass in all these environment variables, uh, database, user password, root password, and time zone, which is kind of cool. And you can set whatever port it is you need. And then on the inside of the container, of course, we're just going to talk to the standard MySQL port and the standard Postgres port inside of their, um, inside of their containers. So we've got that. So what in theory we can do is say Docker compose up We'll do a minus D, which we'll put it into the background. It's going to go off and it has they are running. If we do a Docker PS, we can see we've got our MySQL and Postgres running. So if we have set our database YAML properly, it should do a bundle exec rails db create and then so let's create some empty databases and so that is created so let's do a bundle exec rails db schema load and that will load our schema into postgres I'm not 100% sure again that you have to do this, but that's what I did. There you are. Good to go. All in. Now, uh, we've got our Docker, everything's running. So what I did is I downloaded a copy of my database. And so here's the SQL file. And we're going to load that into MySQL. Now you could all do all of this, of course, on a production system if you are crazy. But seeing as I'm not so crazy, I've decided to do this locally. So we're going to load this into MySQL. So what we need to do is there's the command to connect to MySQL. Of course, we're going to use our local machine. We're using this crazy port that's the one that's set up by Docker Compose. And I believe, oh, first we need to go in and create a database, right? So let's go in and create the database and create database lottery portal development. Done. Okay, now, where is it? Uh, lottery portal development, and we're going to import that SQL file. And this will go off and take a minute or two. Let's bi that and this. I don't know what this is. Uh, I'm just going to delete it. Nope, I screwed that up. So it's going to delete. There we go. Saved it. Let's run that again. And this will go off and import all of our data into MySQL. And while it's doing that, um, let's talk for a second about how we're doing this import. So all the stuff up to now, I'm sorry, all this time that I've been talking is really just prepping everything. Now we're getting the data, uh, you know, using Docker Compose, got our databases running, make sure there's everything there because we're doing this on our local environment because we don't want to risk doing it in production first time. So we're now getting a database done from production, loading that into our local machine. I know that for some people we can't do this because of, 
you know, uh, data security and all the rest of it. But this is the example where I am doing this now because we don't have any user information here. So I've loaded the data into MySQL. And if we take a look at MySQL, um, uh, use, I should have done that first. And we can select count star from uh, lottery infos, for example, and we can see this 494, so the data is in there. Now we're gonna use something called PG Loader. And PG Loader is built exactly for this. It's a little piece of software that connects to one database and spews it into another database, in this case, MySQL into Postgres. And again, we're gonna use Docker for this because that way we don't have to do any of the crazy requirements that PG Loader needs. It needs some libs, it needs some this, it needs some that. We don't need to do any of that. We just use Docker. I know it's gone, I've gone from completely anti-Docker to using it for everything except my Rails app. So what we're gonna do is, here's my kind of list of commands. We're gonna pull down um, the, the, the container. So we've got the thing, there we go. And I'm gonna scoot over back to my uh, proper directory and let's we can just check you'll see here's i'm running pg loader 3.6.3 development and it's all good to go so pg loader is very complicated and has lots of switches and lots of things that you can send it so what we're going to do is send it a command file now it took me a while to figure out how this is kind of like the the, the big tip in this thing, how to do the command file in, when you're using Docker container. So I've set up my command file, which is very, very basic. And that says load the database, and we're gonna load it in from the MySQL container that we've contained, and we're gonna load it into the uh, Postgres. So out and into that. And we're gonna alter the schema this is the key here. Alter the schema. It's my SQL doesn't really have schemas, so it uses the database name, and we're going to put our database into public on Postgres, and we're going to just do 10,000 rows at a time. Um, only the data, and truncate means that we're going to completely erase the target database before we start this, so every time you start it, it will do a clean, fresh import. So we can run this by doing this here. And what that says is, uh, we're gonna use our local network, um, just like we do in all Docker things. And we're gonna give it a name, just so it looks nice in the Docker PS. And here's my directory, and we're gonna mount that inside the container under slash data. And then we're gonna run PG loader using slash data pg loader commands, which is going to magically point to our pg loader commands here. I hope that makes sense. Docker is very confusing. So that's it, we're gonna run it, and this should connect to MySQL, suck down the data, put it into Postgres. That's it, there we go. And, in, and it's gonna run, I don't have a ton of data, and you can see there's kind of um, some minor things because of Rails types and so on. And there. Now the interesting thing, look here. It imported everything. These numbers are all the same except here. Public lottery draws. There's a million rows, but it didn't import any. And why is that? And this is why. I guess in Postgres you can't keep very old data, like from the year zero. Uh, so what's happening is that it hits this thing, it says there's a data constraint, it's out of range. I don't know why that's out of range, but fair enough. So what we need to do is go into MySQL. Um,
and we are going to update the data. Uh, and I, I had a little thing. Let's. I'm just gonna. And we can just update our data. Everything has a date before 1960, because <laughs> I know that none of my data is older than 1960. Uh, we're just gonna, and I know that what happened is that there was parsing data from a website, and sometimes it would just say 07 when it was 2007. And so there's a bunch of data that has the wrong year. So we're just gonna say anything before 1960, add 2000 to it, and that'll work. And there's 42 rows. So let's go back, run this Docker command again. And as I said, we're using the truncate command in PG Loader, and that will uh, blast our database so we don't have to worry about anything. And it says processing tables in this order. Here's all the tables, and it's going to go off. And now we've got all of our rows, and that's it. Um, our data, our Rails app is, well, forget about Rails. We've moved the data from MySQL to Postgres. And then inside of Rails, we're use, no longer using MySQL. We're using Postgres. And if I do bundle exec Rails C, it should go out and connect to my um, proper thing. And lottery info last. And we can see Montana Big Sky. So it's connecting. Mm -hmm. There it is. So it's, we're getting the data. If we look at a Docker PS, we've only got Postgres running. So that means we're connected. That's it. That's how you move a Rails app from MySQL to Postgres. Hope that helps. See you soon. Oh, yeah. Like, subscribe, hit the bell notification, all that good stuff. Stop by frequently every couple of weeks or so, I try and put up a Rails video or something to do with development. See you soon.